Kathy and the cloud. We're really excited to have you here. Um, today we have with us Beth Poss and she will be pr uh, presenting on supporting your youngest AAC learners, how carefully curated resources with adult facilitation can promote language development, play, and communication. And we will turn it over to her, Beth. Oh, look, and I just realized I need to share my screen. So like, I know this is gonna look so <laughs> weird, but I have to tip my thing down because I'm like, where is my, I've like too many, I was just telling, I was just telling her, I have way too many windows open and I need to get to the share my screen. Why is it too small? Exit minimize video, there we go. So hi everybody, welcome. I'm gonna share my screen with you so that you guys can see everything going on. Um, there we go. So you've got my, we've got my, um, my thing up. I'm going to like make this attempt. Uh, there we go. Share. Now I'm going to make this attempt to actually keep an eye on the chat, which is going to be a little hysterical for me to try to figure this out. All right. Awesome. So welcome to uh, carefully curated resources with adult facilitation can promote language development, play and communication. And we are going to, um, Get started. I'm going to go ahead and you really don't need to see me. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to go ahead and advance my slides. Um, so there's all my information. There is a, you guys, it's in, I know it's put up, the slides are, deck is up, but there's a bit.ly for it. And then there's also um, a URL, if the, I mean, not a URL, a QR code, if that makes it a little bit easier. All my important information, like uh, I am employed by lesson picks, but this is not really a lesson pick session. There might be a couple of lesson pick things in here, but just one or two. Um, but I also present as a private consultant and for which I might receive a stipend. And non-financial disclosures, I'm a member of the editorial board for ATOB. We are currently accepting um, proposals for articles. Uh, we're accepting articles, not proposals. We're accepting actual article. Go to the ATIA website, ATOB, if you have something amazing that you want to share um, and it's up until I think June 15th or July 15th is when our deadline is for that. And I'm an ASHA member and a CEC member. You can find me on social media at Poss Beth on Twitter. And I figured out how to put my first name first and my last name last on Instagram. So if you want to find me on Instagram, it's at Beth Poss. And you can always email me at possbeth at gmail.com. And I know Rachel and I'm following in the footsteps of Rachel and Lauren, who did an amazing job. And I'm going to be in the same boat as them where I've got so much to share. So I'm going to go ahead and like try to get everything going. But I want to share this little meme that I found on Facebook a couple of years, a few years ago. Today, two-year-olds can unlock a phone, open and close their favorite apps all by themselves. When I was that age, I was eating dirt, right? Like totally. They didn't internet. I tell my kids sometimes, I'm like, yeah, they didn't have the internet when my kids are 22 and almost 24. And I'm like, they didn't have the internet when I was your all's age. Um, so take a look at this picture for a second and just, you know, think about it. And if you want to put um, uh, any comments anytime in the um, chat, there's a few times I'm going to really ask you guys to participate in the chat, but take a look at this and what are your thoughts on that? So reflect on these statements and feel free to put it in the chat. The children under the age of five should have minimal screen time. Children two and under should have no screen time. Some screen time is okay, even for infants and toddlers, or it doesn't matter how much screen time young children get. So let me know your thoughts on that. So technology and its impact on families has changed dramatically since the release of the iPad in 2010. Can you believe? 10 years ago, 2010. So think about what does that mean for parent-child interactions, peer and sibling interactions, independent child play, access for children with disabilities, which is why I know we are all here, right? So there are some statements, and um, if if um, I think it was I think it was Melissa that was facilitating my session, but all of the links to every all of the research that I'm going to reference, which I know is so important sometimes 
to go back to, especially when you're able to, um, when, you, when you're advocating for purchasing of technology or something with this population. Um, so all of these links are in the slide deck. So feel free to go ahead and get them. And I'm gonna speak to different components of it, but we have a lot of policy statements that can help guide us um, in our use of technology with young children. And it has changed a lot since pre iPad days. That guidance. So in May of 2018, the American Academy of Pediatrics came out with a statement, which was a big update to their um, much earlier 2008-2009 um, statement on no, no screen time meeting, no television for children two years of age or younger, and then an hour. So what they came out with was more kind of guidelines of make your own family media use plan, treat media as you would any other environment in your child's life, set limits, encourage playtime, be a good role model, screen time shouldn't always be alone time, know the value of face-to-face -face communication, Lig limit digital media for your youngest, and notice how it says limit, right? Um, create tech-free zones, don't use technology as an emotional pacifier, apps for kids, do your homework. And that's why you guys are here, right? We're gonna look at apps for kids, for young kids. It's okay for your teen to be online. Warn children about the importance of privacy and the dangers of social media. And remember, kids will be kids. But what they came out with is to say, media and digital devices are an integral part of our world today. And that's the reality of it, right? And I see people commenting on how their own children are using it and everything. So NAEYC, the National Association of Education of Young Children, came out with a policy statement in 2012. And this is still their current policy statement. I check it all the time to see if it's been updated. But with guidance, these various technology tools can be harnessed for learning and development. Without guidance, usage can be inappropriate and or interfere with learning and development. And I really agree with that statement strongly. And what they specifically came out with and said about the birth to two-year-old population is that ensure any use of technology and media serves as a way to strengthen adult-child relationships. So think about it right now, like what with the world that we've been living in and that contact and that contact with grandma and grandpa or aunts and uncles or cousins has had to be like via Zoom. I mean, we did our Passover Seder via Zoom, okay? Um, I'm sure many people did important, important family um, events uh, uh, over media now. Um, and so think about how it can serve to strengthen that. The Fred Rogers Center, um, they actually came out with a statement in 2017, and they talked about the role of relationships in children's use of technology and the role of the child's relationship to self. So think about what that might mean, the child's relationship to others and how that might come through with technology and the child's relationship to the larger world community and the environment and how we can use technology. And what I wanna make sure that people know is technology is not good or bad ever, right? It's a thing, it can't be good or bad. It's how it's used. Somebody else had a Zoom Seder too, that's cool. I'm sure lots of us had, lots of us had Zoom Seders. Okay, so reflect for a minute and consider the technology applications that you're aware of and how could they strengthen relationships to self, autonomy, understanding of yourself? How could they strengthen relationships to others, communication and interaction? And how can they strengthen relationships to the larger world, community and environment? And what is the world like outside of their home? And what is their role in that larger world? So these are just things for you guys to think about as we're going through some really fun and exciting ways to think about using technology with our youngest learners. And then there's the National Educational Technology Plan, um, which didn't necessarily target specifically preschoolers um, or early childhood, but it talks in general, but I think these are all important in, when you think about it. Like they didn't, they, the use of technology in education is not passive use, like simply consuming media or completing digitized worksheets falls short. It's the idea around media production and interaction with experts and global connections and design and peer, peer collaboration and immersive simulation and coding. And we're gonna look at some of those things. But I want you to think of media production. This is the most photographed generation ever in the world, the last 10 years, right? And they are photographed, they are, I mean, every parent who has a kid 
has had their kid grab their phone to take pictures or take video. So think about how they are creating media these days. So an uh, article came out in 2019, just this last year, about selecting appropriate toys for young children in the digital era. And the highlights of this article are that electronic media has been associated with displacement of play-based caregiver child interactions and reductions in cognitive and or language or gross motor activities with implications for child development and health outcomes. That doesn't sound good, right? But I want you to hold on to that a second because what they then said was that toys that are the most likely to facilitate development are those that are the most enjoyably and productively used for play together with an engaged caregiver because in such context, play with toys is likely to include rich language experiences, reciprocal, meaning serve and return, verbal interactions and scaffolding. And so my question to you is, can't those digital resources that we think about, the things that we're gonna show you, can't they be that too, right? It's all how you use it. RAND Corporation came out with some recommendations around screen time saying, is it purposefully integrated to support learning? Is it solitary or taking place with others? Is it sedentary or mobile? Mobile, like not mobile devices, but like you're getting up off your tush and moving. Um, and what are the contents and features? And what's the total screen time involved? And then Lindsay Doherty, who has uh, wrote an article that's in the RAND, and it's linked in there. Um, it's in the RAND publications, but she wrote it for US News and World Report, and I just love this. What she said is step aside screen time, make room for screen purpose. And that's really what we wanna think about. It's not about the screen time, it's about what is the purpose of what you're using that screen for. We know that play is central to children's development and learning. And we need to make sure that interactions with technology and media mirror their interactions with other play materials, right? So they need to be able to explore technology and interactive media in playful and creative ways. So not as like a babysitter. So Gang Mason and, I might be saying it wrong, Jang Mason and Disney in 2017, they released some research and there was actually some previous research before this where they talked about making participation in screen experience, making it language rich, and that we have to create what's called 2D to 3D transference by making connections between what they see on a screen and what happens in the real world. So they have to play games. So what we need to do is we need to play games before and after using media, using objects similar to what's seen on the device, like blocks or a ball, and point out and label objects in real life that they might see on TV or touch on screens like animals and flowers. And this requires multiple presentations and experience and assistance or language cues to scaffold their understanding. So my example here is playing in a toy kitchen and then having an opportunity to play on the uh, app, um, My Play Home, okay? Which is has pretend play. It's like, uh, it's like uh, <clears throat> um, color forms on steroids. Um, so it's, it's making that transference from the 2D to the 3D, from the screen to real life. And of course, this is an assistive technology conference, so make sure let's make sure we're talking about that. We know that there's, you all are here, and so I know this is not your misconception, but there are misconceptions around the, that limit the recommendations of AT and AAC for young children. There's no prerequisites, none whatsoever, right? And there's multiple studies that show that and that children don't need to have an understanding of cause and effect or other cognitive skills. They don't have to demonstrate that before they can effectively use AT devices. And using AT does not mean, or AAC does not mean giving up on a child being able to learn to perform a particular task or skill independently. And actually the data suggests that the use of assistive technology can significantly improve outcomes for infants and toddlers and improves both socio-emotional and pre-academic skills. All right, so let's get to the avalanche, right? Let's get to the apps. So um, there's so many apps out there and we all have to learn to become critical curators. And that's why you guys are here. So what makes an effective educational app? I have a link to this also, but if you wanna pull up this, you can use the QR code. I'm gonna move to it just a second. I'll give it a second for anybody that's trying to pull it up. Um, 
what makes an effective learning app? And this is what I have developed that is based on that compilation of all this research that we just ran through in 15 minutes, okay? Um, it's that it must be open-ended to support play and problem solving. So don't give me drill and practice, okay? Don't give these little, the drill and practice might have its place for your third grader who's working on their multiplication or for your you know, second grader who's doing maybe a phonics activity, but we want it to be open-ended to support play and problem solving. It should promote literacy, language, and vocabulary development. It should be have rich, engaging activities that invite a high degree of interactivity and control by the user so that the child or the per and the people using the application are in control. They're not just responding to it, they're controlling it. It should encourage movement if at all possible, and sometimes there's fine motor, sometimes it's gross motor, and we'll look at a couple of things that really do that. And it should enhance interactions with adults or peers instead of just promoting solitary exploration. Again, you've got to have that adult being a part of that. It absolutely has to be culturally diverse and free of stereotypes. Children need to see themselves reflected in the materials that they're using, including technology, and they also need to see a reflection of the world around them. And of course, it needs to meet a developmental need. So we're going to talk about some apps that can build language and play, the fact that you can build vocabulary, turn-taking and reciprocal interactions, expand communicative intent, encourage children to imitate and initiate, encourage expressive output, and support comprehension. So there was some really good research that came out in the last year that talked about that children hear 1.4 million more words just from being read at least five books a day prior to kindergarten. So we know that literacy and language are intertwined, right? And so we can't talk about language without getting into that literacy. So I'm gonna show a really brief um, video because I don't wanna, we've only got, we got 40 minutes left. So I'm gonna show this very quickly. This is Kim Rankin and her son. What do you hear? I hear a hippopotamus snorting in my ear. Hippopotamus, hippopotamus. What do you hear? I hear flamingo flirting in my ear. Flamingo, flamingo. What do you hear? I love that expectant pause that she gives. Zebra, zebra, what do you what do it hear? I hear a bug constrictor hissing in my ear. So I'm going to forward past that just so that we have time for everything. But just that simple act of being able to, of that, just to have that illustration of even with that young child being able to use that AEC device, how it becomes this interactive uh, experience. So I love this, another one of my favorite memes or photos that I've seen out on Facebook or other social media. There is no app to replace your lap, re read to your child, but that doesn't mean that we can't use technology to read to our children. So I'm gonna show a couple of different, um, couple of different sites that have a lot of access to books. Um, so one of my favorites is Epic. It is always been free for educators. Um, and then you can provide, you like in the classroom, you provide a code to the students and they're able to log on. It's been free until the end of this month for parents to be able to access it at home for their students. I don't know how that'll change, but it's very reasonably priced as a subscription for, for families. And that's how they make it free for educators is by charging families a low monthly fee for it. I'm gonna um, flip over into, um, into a, one of a, an epic book and I'm gonna see if I can, let me see if I can manage to, um, well, I'm, I was gonna show you guys, let's see if I can do this. So I've got, I've see if I can get my, um, if I can get my communication board up. Let's get my, um, so we're gonna take a look at, this is one, um, one of the many books, there's a whole bunch of others, there's so many that you can find, of course. All right, I'm trying to get my screen mirroring of my iPad up. So in the last session, um, they were talking about re the reflector app, right? Um, so I'm gonna try to have these both up here at the same time. I've got my iPad, I've reflected with the reflector app and I'll just sort of 
Sorry, I know it's masking the I know it's masking the comments. Oh, there we go. The um, not the comments. The oh, you all know what I'm talking about. Captions. Thank you. I can't speak and manipulate things at the same time. It's not going to move. Let's try it over there. All right. So I've got a book called Big and Little up on um, Epic, and of course, we want to be able to encourage that language with it, right? So I happen. I'm just picking one of the many. Um, what's not free for SLPs? Epic is absolutely, I, if you sign up with an, with an educator of any type, like contact them. If you're an SLP, I've had mine and I don't even have an education, um, email address anymore because I'm no longer with a school district. Um, so it is, it is check with them because they, 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 I bet you they will let you have it for free. Um, anyway, so I have Talk Suite, which if you used to use Total Talk, it's the new version. It's called Talk Suite. Talk Suite. Talks. Oh, I'm so sorry, Lauren. Don't tell them on me then, please. Um, see if you can get like uh, your a principal. Anybody, somebody that will advocate for you. Um, so Lauren's saying it is, I mean, Arlene's saying it is free for, so this is big. This is little, right? So I can be on here with my big and my Little. Little. Right, in my going into my, I keep going into, if I go into my modifiers and my colors and shapes colors. and sizes shapes that I can read some more that this is big. It is big, big, right? So we can do this together. I wanna show you that what I'm talking about in terms of, I'm gonna move this a little over to the side so it's not my way right now, that when I'm talking about what we're using um, as far as digital tools with kids is I want you to notice, I don't have like a read to me thing on here. And this is not an app where I can click around and funky things happen. I click on it and I turn the pages. So it is technology without all the bells and whistles because that's really what we wanna focus on here is the reading. What I like about it is look how clean, how crisp it is. If I have a child with a visual impairment and I was doing this like on my iPad where I could more easily enlarge it right now, I could zoom in and really look at that leaf or I could really look at what's on that tree and what the like and differences. I don't need those fancy bells and whistles. And so I think it's real important that when we think about the technology that we're using with children and we think about those criteria that I talked about, that it's not the bells and whistles, right? And we're gonna look at some things that has a few more bell bells and whistles. How do you get your device on the same screen as the book? Can I do this in Zoom? Yeah, you can do this in Zoom. I am reflecting my iPad, Regina, I'm reflecting it. I am, I happen to have two monitors, but if you didn't have two monitors, you could have it up. I just resized my iPad, like the thing there so that it was, so that it wasn't huge, like comes on like that. And then I just am positioning it. It's being a little stubborn and it doesn't want to position. It kind of wants to go over, but I could definitely be doing that. So that'd be a way that I could be modeling for that child. I'm going to show you some other examples of how you can do that kind of modeling, even without the iPad device. Um, so that's Epic. Let me go back over. And that's just one of the one of thousands of books at all different levels in Epic, right? Um, but how you can find those books, just like you can find any books that are going to support um, that are going to support core words. So this is another one that targets up and down that I really like. So some more. And don't forget about your fringe vocabulary. Core words are important. Come see me tomorrow with Kelly Fawner at two o'clock, and we're going to be talking core words, but we're going to talk fringe too. Don't forget your fringe vocabulary. So this is another book in Epic where there's such great fringe vocabulary. Um, and I wanna say this book is called I Am Black, but I'm not 100% sure if that's the name, but it's linked, it's okay, because it's linked right in my presentation. So you'll be able to find it. But all that awesome, look, you get a, your core page about people and, and jobs and stuff like that. There's another one where it's got food and another one where it's got language and all of that kind of stuff. So don't forget your fringe vocabulary. We're not just talking, um, Unite for Literacy. Oops, my iPad is now covering up the chat window and I don't like that. Let's move that aside. Um, so Unite for Literacy is another one of my favorites. I have that. Did I not have that open? All right, we're going to go ahead and open that right there. So Unite for Literacy is totally free. I love it. It is um, picture books. It is um, lots of real images in there. But the best thing about it is that it is available. All of the books have both English and Spanish options for the text, for the text that you're seeing. So let's just look at loud and quiet because it's right there. But then you can have 
narration in all these different languages. And while I'm not the huge advocate of the narration of like the kids listening to a narrated book and not having the family read it, what I do like about this when it's narrated in all these different languages is if you have families whose own literacy skills might not be fabulous, it gives them an opportunity to be able to hear that text in their own language. And it's, um, you can have all of these different, there's so many, there's more than this even, that's maybe just the ones that are in here, but there's all these different languages, including American Sign Language, which is awesome for our kids or our families who have hearing, uh, who, are, who are part of the deaf community and using sign language. All right, I'm gonna keep going. Chatter picks, all right. Um, this is awesome. It is available on iOS and Google Play, and that is my beautiful puppy dog there, who is a nice model for this. And I've got, I think I've got everything up here. I'm like making sure, just pulling it up. I have way too many apps. All right, here's Chatter Picks. I'm going to pull over my, it is from the wonderful people at Duck Duck Moose. I'm going to show a couple more. Um, I'm going to show a, a couple more. I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to take a photo, which we're actually just going to get from here. Let's hope there is nothing embarrassing that I'm going to take a, going to grab a picture of. So let's just find, oh, we'll take my cute daughter and my other dog. There we go. So just because that was what was easy to pull up, but ideally you take a picture of a, yes, we have two GSPs um, <laughs> and this guy here too, uh, an English setter. So you get your picture, right? It's prompting me and it's telling me to pick next. Ideally, you take the picture of the kid or the kid would take a picture of whatever they want to take a picture of. And then it tells you, it says, draw a line across where their mouth is. So I'm going to draw a line across where her mouth is. I could have done it on him too, if I wanted. And then I'm going to record and, uh, you know, it's a Christmas picture, so we'll go with it. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, ho, ho, ho. Just because it happened to be a Christmas one. So now I can play it. I didn't do a very good job of swiping her mouth, right? So I could go back and I could fix it or I could, I could choose Gus instead. Whoops, let's do one more. Let's get, we'll go back in, let's get, um, we'll still, we'll still go ahead and get, we'll get Gus, but we'll just go ahead and have Gus this time. Okay, so we've got our picture. I'm gonna hit next. I'll do Gus's mouth this time. Record in three, two, one, go. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. It's the middle of summer, but whatever. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, Merry see, you can see it's so much cuter when it's the dog instead of me missing my kid's mouth. Okay, so I go to next and I can have different filters. I can put fun stickers on. So I can give her some fun glasses and him a wizard's hat and I could scroll through and get all sorts of other awesome things. Maybe they're gonna play guitar too. I can add some text. So if I wanted to work on some literacy stuff there, we could have dog, right? So I can do all sorts of fun things. The child is in complete control. Is this have this, so we've got that interactivity. That, that ability to have motor, right? They got to get up and move around and find the picture that they want to take. Um, so all of those kinds of things, I can save it. It goes into my camera roll or it goes into my gallery. All right, let's see what else I got next on my, on my list here. Okay, took a picture of a school bus and had to talk to the kids. That's awesome, I love it. Um, and Duck, Duck Moose has lots of awesome apps and we're gonna look at some others too. Okay, so let's take a look. This is one of my favorites. There's actually two of them and um, I'm not gonna take the time to show you both. I'll go ahead and show you. So this one is called Magnetic Board. The other one, I'll show you both actually. I'm just gonna do it. The other one is called Magnetic Alphabet. The difference between them is Magnetic Board, when you move the letters, it speaks. So I don't know if you can hear this. Let me turn my computer volume up really high. So when you, if I'm in, that, and I have options, like I can do lowercase. So if I want to do. A, cough, T, cat. Cat, right. Magnetic letters doesn't have as many options for other stickers. So I'm going to show you, like there's some stickers and stuff. I mean, there's some things we could get the crown. Keep going. Whoops. 
I just closed that one out. So let's go ahead. It doesn't have as many stickers. So let me pull up magnetic letters, which is very similar. One is the first one that talks is called magnetic board. The second one is called magnetic alphabet. And the Mary Beth is asking, what's the name of the app you're using? It's called Reflector um, by, by the company is called Parrot and the app is called Reflector 3. So here I can go and I can scroll through and I can get all sorts of, I love this because there's all sorts of fun images. So I can kind of go crazy with monsters if I want to. I can get different backgrounds if I care to. So if I want to have, I know there's an outer space one on here. So if I want to have my monsters in outer space. So all sorts of fun. Now, again, there's, there's nothing, there's no fancy sound effects. There's no bells and whistles with this app. This is just a iPad version of magnetic letters in color form, basically, right? And stickers. Um, and, but think of the language that you can get. That's so silly, a bear in space. Um, you know, we could change things or let's have our, let's do our pirate ship. I could sweep everything away and let's have our pirate ship and have some things. I will say there's a couple of images on this that I don't love in terms of um, multicultural issues. And I probably would skip over that one just for that purpose. So maybe I'll pick a different, let's do a woodland creatures and let's just get rid of him. But I can have my moose and I can have my lynx and I can have my bear and a fox on the stump. And I could put uh, the park ranger in there, right? I could put him next to, so think of all the amazing language that you're gonna get. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go on to my next, let's move this aside for a minute so I can see. So think about that, measuring that app against that checklist. Uh, we'll move this completely over. I'm working on two monitors too, if people wanna know like why I'm moving things off to the side. I'm working on two monitors, makes a big difference. Okay, so Tokoboka apps. I have to say, I love some of them and I hate some of them. I don't like the super overly busy ones. I'm gonna show you guys Toka Band, which I think is particularly, and not that there's anything wrong with some of the busier ones, but they're way too complicated, I think, for young kids. If I can't figure them out, then probably the kids that I'm playing with can't figure them out either. So I'm gonna show you guys Toka Band, which is one of my favorites for younger kids. Um, and I'm, Okay, so it comes up, it's, it's got this, and I have all these like critters down at the bottom that I can choose. And I pull them up. So they're getting to make music. I don't wanna have to talk. No, try not to talk over the sound. And then if I elevate something to the top, let me elevate like this one with a string to where that star is, then the kid gets to play it. Right, if I don't touch it, nothing happens. So again, it's that high degree of interactivity by the user and being able to have that. Oh, I can sing all the, you can sing all the Toka Boca part. That would might drive me crazy eventually. And then also I can make changes. So again, it's that control by that user, right? And all of the language and play that we can get to have from that. We'll take Toka Boca Band away. Move that off to the side. So, so again, um, Toka Boca, great app company. Um, look critically at them. Oh, let's talk about switch access, right? Um, I had been on a quest recently to find some more things that were decent that were switch access. And I usually show switch kid, but I don't know if we'll have, we'll see, we might have time. Um, uh, and I'm gonna show some, and we know that you can make PowerPoint switch accessible and Tar Heel Reader games and Tar Heel Reader is switch accessible. Pictello is switch accessible. There's a lot of apps from inclusive, but I just found the Zyre, I don't know if I'm saying this, Zyrobotics LLC. Um, and so I'm gonna pull up their, um, let's find it. Um, Tommy the turtle learns to code. So if you remember back in the thing, this is specifically for young children to be able to learn to code. And it's also switch accessible, which is super cool. So if I go into settings, for example, right now it's on scanning, right? It's switch scanning. So you'll see as it's going through. 
So it is switch accessible. I can set the scanning up or down. It's not two switch scanning, which is a shame. Um, so it would be nice if it was two switch scanning, but um, it, at least it's switch scanning. And again, I can increase or decrease that scanning speed. So as I'm gonna go in, we're gonna go into like free play. I have to time it with the scan there. So if I had a switch plugged in, which I don't, so now it's, you can see how it's scanning through the choices of what we can have this turtle do. So I can, when it gets to it, I'm going to choose something. Okay, so now that's one of the commands I give him. Let's give him another one. We'll do jump and forward and backward. And now I'm going to have it play. So this is beginning coding. So, right, so I put together a series of movements. So, and this is for switch access. Like, yes, our kids can code, right? So awesome. Um, I'll show you one of the, Pictello is awesome. I, one of the things I do wish Pictello, I wish that the switch um, scanning part worked in the wizard, in the creation, so that the kids could be accessing the scanning as, they're cre as we're creating um, a book, right? I'm going to show you all my dirty secrets and search for um, Switch Kids. Okay, there we go. So Switch Kids is from Marblesoft. It's hard to find, there's a lot of cause and effect apps out there. I'm gonna turn the volume down off on that. There's a lot of cause and effects apps out there, but most of them are really kind of dull and boring and there's not a lot of language you're gonna get from it. I do like these because there's a lot more options in it. We can do build a kid. I usually show the bubble gum one because it's cute too. So again, this is a sing simple switch. You're just hitting the switch, but think of all the opportunities for language as we're hitting this, that we could be talking about, oh, she's got her eyes. So what, you know, we'd have that parts of the body up. Um, we could be saying more, you know, what do you guess? What do you think is gonna come next? Is it gonna be her mouth or is it gonna be her shoes, you know? Um, and so again, getting to keep, oh, Oh, she's in her underwear. Oh my goodness. You know, all those opportunities for that language. She doesn't have any hands. Oh, there's her hands. That's a good thing. Where's her feet? Oh, she's just in her underwear. I hope she gets some clothes on. There we go. So again, and because it's random, right? She's, her name's Maria. Um, okay, I have to hit out to get out of that. Either that or my iPad froze. Um, okay, there we go. Just took a, I was hitting a little too fast and it was not keeping up with me. Um, so again, that's Switch Kids and there's three different games in there and there's different op options in there for, um, for changing it. I do like the fact that it does have different skin tones and different of, of kids, of boys and girls. Um, so lots of different options there. And that one is called Switch Kids from Marble Soft. Um, Okay, so let's take a look at interactive slide decks. Um, if you were in the last session, Lauren and Rachel talked about this, um, and I'm just going to show you a little bit more of how you can use this, not just for games, but also for creative play. So let me find my, um, let me find my, uh, I, yeah, I know you guys are like looking at my lap right now. All right, there we go. Okay, so this was made in lesson, this was made using lesson picks images. I said, this is my one thing. I do work for lesson picks. This is my one thing that I'm showing you guys. It's actually lesson picks. Um, and I did use the um, lesson picks add in to create this, right? But I got it all set up in advance for my kids. And so I was able to pull these pictures straight from lesson picks within PowerPoint. Um, and it's to retell the story of I went walking. I screenshotted a communication board in here. This is um, one from Lesson Picks, a core board with a, um, with a fringe board on top of it. And I just combined them and put them in. So I'd have that so we could be modeling language, right? But we could talk about, I went walking and what did I see? And again, if I was doing this in a teletherapy situation, it would be really easy for me to do um, that remote cursor control or to have the student, the child directing what we're doing. Um, and then we could say, let's move it. What's behind that? And oh, there's a cat. And could they guess it right from reading the book? Same thing, behind the barn, there's a horse. I went walking and what did I see? 
we could move him around and have that. Um, so again, in this format, it's not necessarily switch accessible, although when I have something selected, so I have that cat selected, and if I use my right arrow keys, I can. So if you have a switch, because I'm not in, I'm in edit mode, I'm not in slideshow mode. I can't see the chat, I need to move this. Okay, I'm not in slideshow mode, I'm in edit mode, right? So I don't have that same switch accessibility of like moving, the, but I could, so I can, I can make it, I can make it, you know, work for that kid. So I can have them move, you, if we, depending on where you have the switches, what commands you have the switches set up to, if I use my right arrow and my left arrow, I'm just moving the cat around using my right arrow and my left arrow. So I could have, then we've got the horse and then we can move that around. I could put that on there and say, can you move the tree and let's see what's behind the tree. And the student would be able to have that access. So again, I'm creating that access for that student. So again, this is using lesson picks images. You could use any images and do the same thing, right? But of course, I'm going to say you should use lesson picks because all of our images are transparent. So I don't have to worry about like getting rid of the background or anything like that. They perfectly match the story. We have tons of storybook images in our um, in, in lesson picks. But you could do this with images from, from anything that you had access to. All right, let's pull that. And let me, of course, I lost my all right there we go i know you just had so much fun looking at my lap um all right so that's interactive slide decks um i like them also because it limits distracting backgrounds like so many different apps for kids maybe with visual impairments or who are just highly distractible and you really want to just focus on the things that you want them to focus on the value of like either using it in powerpoint i could do the same thing in google slides right i could copy and paste my images. We don't have the lesson picks add in in Google Slides yet. Hopefully this summer it will be coming. Um, but I could have gone into lesson picks as a subscriber and copied and pasted all of those images and done the exact same thing in Google Slides. Um, and it's accessible on multiple platforms. So it doesn't matter. I could do this on an iPad. I could do this on a PC, on a Mac. I could do this on my, if I'm back in my classroom, um, I could do this on an interactive whiteboard in, in my early childhood classroom, all of that. Um, okay, so this one is really fun. This is called My Caterpillar. Um, it's by Story Tor Toys and it's an augmented reality. So we're gonna see if I can get this to work. Um, let me pull it up and then move my, move my, I need to connect my screen. Okay, so I'm got, all right, I got my iPad up for you guys to see. You're gonna see my mess of an office. Whoops, just crash, let's do it back. Okay. Yes, I know, I'm making sure, oh, it's not blocked, got it. Need to be in bright low, okay, I got it, let's start. All right, so now this is called AR, you're looking at all my notes, I've got, it. okay. And it's gonna ask me, oh, do you see those little dots right there? So I gotta move around, oh, where'd it go? Where'd Oh, it's, you know what, I've used this a bunch of times and it hasn't crashed. There we go. Let's see if we can get it going one more time. There's those dots, let's find it. So I'm moving around, right? You guys can see that. And I'm gonna go see, oh, I wanna see what's in the pond. I can also tap on it. So if I was a child that didn't have as much mobility, we can tap to make things happen. I'm gonna go see what that is down there. Ooh, I'm looking for the caterpillar and something cool to happen. Oh, oh, there we go. So I really had to look around and find it. There's an apple. Oh, and there comes the caterpillar. He's gonna eat right through it. So I am walking around with this, right? So I've got my augmented reality and I can get myself up and moving, plus all the language and play that I'm gonna get from this. Okay, so that was, that was My Caterpillar by Story Tours, Toys. You'll see a little bit of a theme in that there are certain um, publishers that I really like. So we're gonna, we've seen Duck Duck Moose and we're gonna see another app by them. The Chatterpix Kids was Duck Duck Moose. Um, Story Toys is one. Um, I don't think I have Adoki Academy in here, but um, maybe I'll show you wise one too. 
All right, so let's take a look. This is another one by Duck Duck Moose. Um, they have Wheels on the Bus, Old McDonald. They have a bunch of other ones too. Um, and I really love, um, I really love having um, all of the, the options that they have. Um, they are on iOS and Google Play, which is really nice because so many apps are just for iPad, but they're, these are, a lot of theirs are available for Google Play. And they've got multiple languages and you can record the child or the adult singing. You're not forced to continue. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Um, let's find it. It's here somewhere. Okay, here we go. So duck, duck, moose. So technically, this is a book, but I don't think of it as a book. Okay. All right. It's going to start playing. Uh, I turn the volume way down. So now you can see there's no music happening and that's because actually in the settings, it would be where I would record myself, but I could have it in English as a female singing, English as a male singing, Spanish, and then there's of course gibberish, and the kazoo. Okay, I'm going to turn the volume way, way down so we don't go crazy. Okay, so again, I can persist on this page. And what I like about this is I can persist on this page as long as I want. And notice how I'm saying persist and not perseverate. There's a really important distinction. Kids need to be able to play. Okay, and we need to be able to let them play until they are tired. We might give them a hint. Oh, I wonder what would happen if you push that button. But we need to have kids have that opportunity to persist and explore until they are tired of it. I guarantee we as adults are tired of it before they are. The same way we are tired of reading the same book every single night 15 times, but they want to hear it. So it's not perseveration always. It's sometimes persistence. Okay, so we've got the doors on the bus. And again, if I have this up, the volume up, and the kids could be recording, and I know you desperately wanna hear me sing. So, okay. The doors on the bus go open and shut, open and shut. I'll just let you know when my kids were little, they used to say, mommy, no sing, no sing, mommy. Okay, so now we're gonna go. I could keep recording if I wanted to, but we'll just click done and done. We'll go back to that page so you can hear my lovely the doors on the bus. And shut. So again, open and shut. it's enough of me. So again, it's that opportunity for the children. And now if the child, they could be using their odd comm device, or if they needed to, they could just, they could tell mommy to mommy, mommy sing, right? Not my kids. My kids never said mommy sing. Okay. So again, I'll keep going through it briefly. It's you can, they, lots of different things will happen. Kids can persist on it. We've got our wipers and I'm the one controlling it. Like the app isn't happening. If I stop and take my hands away, nothing happens, right? It is completely under the kid's control. So they are impacting. It's not passive, it is active. People on the bus go up and down, right? Um, and we can keep going. And then they do have some novel verses, which I do like. The, buck, the baker on the bus says, have some cake. I like that one. I'm going to have some cake. And the frog sings so too. And then the bubbles on the bus go pop, pop, pop. So we've got some novel things in there. So even for the kid that already knows the song, there might be some new verses that they have. And the dog on the bus goes woof, woof, woof. And it comes back to it. And the same thing is with that old McDonald. They had basically the same kind of idea with their old McDonald's farm one and a couple of others that they have. Move that off to the side. All right, next slide. Oh, we're doing good. I'm actually excited. All right, so we're going to look, I guess, like we've, I think we've got time to look at at least um, a couple more apps. So I'm going to let you guys choose. We could look at, so you guys have to put this in the, um, chat window. We could look at another one from story time. Like we could look at, I didn't put the third picture up. So we could look at this book, which is like a book about transportation. 
uh, it's like a pop-up book. We could look at Brown Bear, Brown Bear. Um, or I have not from this company, it's from another company and it's a dress up app. So you guys put in the chat and, and whoever puts their wishes in the chat first, I will choose that one. And then we'll probably have time to look at another one too. So anybody gonna post in the chat or are you gonna make me pick myself or did y'all desert me for, oh, the pop-up book. Okay, so Diana says pop-up book. So that means I have to go find it. You get to see all my dirty secrets on my, on my, um, okay, things that go. Oh, actually you didn't see any of my dirty secrets because I didn't move it over yet. Ha -ha. Um, okay, so this is again from story time. Um, they just recently had a lot of their apps for free and then we'll do Brown Bear, Brown Bear 2 and then we'll look at Dress Up. It'll all be good. And there's a series of these and I love, um, we'll start over. I love what Lauren and Rachel did in the last session. If you saw that about putting things for free and for that were unpaid. Most of these, if I if I purchase them, they're a couple of dollars each. So they're pretty inexpensive. So again, this is not, let me see, I've got some volume with this. It's car, school bus, taxi, motorcycle, scooter, car. So it's pretty simple. School bus, taxi, taxi, bicycle, motorcycle, scooter. But it is kind of cool. Bikes, bump and splash through mud and sand and snow we dash. So it is pretty cool how that's like that 3D effect with it, right? And if I kind of move it around, it does a little bit like I'm just moving my iPad around and it's just doing different things. So it's kind of cool there. And it reads the story. I do wish the text was there besides the just the words of the things. Sorry, it's not keeping pace. The reflector app is a little bit of a delay. Cement truck. There's a little bit of a delay, I think, just with between the streaming and the and the um, the reflector app and all of that. All right, somebody else wanted to see um, Brown Bear, so let's look at Brown Bear. Let's see if I can find it. Um, okay, there's the Brown Bear app. Oh, come back. Ooh, it's crashing on me. I don't know why it's crashing on me. It might just be, I have so many things. I thought I, uh, we'll try it one more time. Brown Bear, Brown Bear is crashing on me. The actual name of the pop-up app is Things That Go. So it's right here. It's right here, Things That Go. And then Zoo Animals is that way also. There's also My First Words. Um, there's a bunch of different ones. These are all from Story time. I'm going to try one more time and see. Mm. It's the, I don't know why the brown bear is crashing. Just not happy. Let me try quitting it completely. Quitting that, 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 quitting that. Okay, let's try. Maybe it'll be happier now. No, it keeps crashing. I had no problem um, at all with it last week showing it. Um, and again, take a look at it. Um, I did, did my iPad just update? I don't know if it just updated, like last week it was fine. Um, but let me go ahead and show the dress up one because I really do like this app also. So this is called dress up. There's like two versions of it. One was free, completely free. And one was a couple of dollars. Um, it's got, I've got multiple characters in it, right? So thinking about our, the, the um, when you think about the criteria, okay, so we've got different skin tones and boys and girls. All right, so we can get them dressed. It does kind of, once you get the clothing to them close, like on it then, so they don't have to have perfect fine motor control. It will, like, it'll, it'll grab it. If so, like, I'm not that close right there, it grabbed it. So that's nice. I like that change out his hair. I have to take his hair off. They're all bald underneath, which is kind of cool. If I want to change his outfit, I could go with, and he could have some polka dots. I do wish, my one complaint is that I wish there was some pink for the boys, for the so-called boys. Um, there's more for the girls, the so-called girls, who I could make bald. And I wish there was short, just regular old short hair, not, not girlish hair necessarily. 
Um, so I wish there was just a few more options for that. Um, so I could put her shirt on. So this is called, I have to love the way some of these apps are named. This is called Dress Up. Um, and again, I do have, I do like the fact that it's got some kids in wheelchairs and I can change uh, his outfit, right? So I do like that there's a little more diversity with that. Um, and I can even change his, um, whatever that thing is called, the pole that's got his stuff on it. So that is called dress up. And I can take the balloons away if we don't want the balloons, right? I can give them glasses. We have um, a couple of superhero options. So the, there is a girl option with the cape too. Um, but I, 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 you know, I have a problem personally, like that the girl, there's a tutu and there, there should be a tutu available for the boy too, in my opinion. So that's my one piece of like my feedback when I measure this against the criteria that I think that the, um, is a little bit with that. So who makes the dress up app? It is a British company. I have no idea what it's called off the top of my, uh, off the top of my head, but it's, but it's called dress up. Like if you search in the, if you search in the app store for dress up, it'll come up and it's part of a, it's part of a, uh, like you can buy a, you know how you can buy a package of apps with tickly pickly and quiet way and paper dolls. And I don't like any of the other ones as much as I like the dress up app, but that's just my, that's my take on it. Um, I'm going to try to pull him up. I've got like one minute left. No, not happening. All right. So I'm going to go to the end of my session and. And I want you guys to reflect for a minute um, and feel free to share it in the chat. So how can I use electronic media to enhance communication and play for young children? And how can I support families in utilizing screen-based resources in a way, in ways that enhance play, language, and interaction skills? So that's what I hope when you connect all the research back at the beginning and all the ideas for using the apps, um, is that it really comes back to using electronic media to enhance communication and play and helping families in user, utilizing screen-based resources. Because we know most of them are, and we may as well give them ways that empower them um, to, to use that. So, yep, I, it, I, I can try and look really quickly before Melissa boots me out of here for the next session. Um, and. And so let's see, let me look up dress. Just so check in the app store. And what I can do, Lauren, is I'll link it in the slides too when I figure it out. So I'll try real quick, dress up. Because there's so many, right? I know you're, you find like a million dress up apps. Um, and I'm not seeing it right now. So I'll figure it out and I'll put that in there. Yep, need to encourage parents to interact when the screen is being used. So thank you guys, it is five o'clock and I know you guys have other sessions to get off to. Um, so thank you guys so much for spending an hour with me um, and have a great rest of your AAC in the cloud and come see me in tomorrow at two o'clock with Kelly Fawner. That's right, don't miss it. Thank you so much, Beth. What a great session. We appreciate all of the resources that you shared, especially maybe the dress up app. I know my daughter would be in love with that. Yes. Um, so <laughs> it looks like a lot of fun. Thank you for that. Um, feel free, everyone, to move into a session for the next time slot. But thank you for joining us here for this. And we will see you in the next session. Thank all you. Right.